me because they mow down other therapists who typical traditional style say, tell me about that. How do you feel? They're like, I don't know how I feel. That's why I came to you. Okay. Very usually aggressive. Uh, there's different classifications. There's passive aggressive. There's passive. We're not going to talk so much about the anger, but about the stress and how we get angry and how we get depressed and why we isolate and why we sabotage and why we make our lives miserable when in fact you're in a position where you're, you're, your life is wonderful. Okay. Okay. So some of the things that I learned to summarize from my experiences growing up, and these I would call old tapes. I can see them today in a more objective stance. But uh, I lived with this. I learned that uh, my performance determined my worth. I would assume there's a couple people in here who might feel that way. That when I do well, I'm OK. And when I don't, I'm not. That my performance determined my worth. And for me, I determined that I was never good enough because I never got the validation from my father. I never got it before he died. In fact, we had a big argument before he died. Okay. Um, I learned that uh, validation from others was more important than validation from myself. I didn't like myself. I was taught that I was, you know, garbage. I was taught that I uh, really didn't matter, that I was nothing. And I, and I mean this. I mean, my father would have me take the dog out for a walk, and one time the dog got away, and we're in the middle of nowhere, and he had to come looking for us, and you know, I'm out there lost. I'm a little kid, and he was angry about the dog. You know? And we all experience these things. Sometimes our parents don't mean to do these things, but we all have our own experiences that give us a self-image that shape the way we're going to see the world as we move forward. I also learned that to be successful, for me, I had to win. And it's true in, in your field that the goal is to win, to win your case. Okay. But to be successful as a human being, I had to give up winning and being right in order to be happy. So a lot of times I have to ask myself, Evan, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Pick one. Because the other way doesn't work. I can still win. I still know how to do the things I used to do. But afterwards, I feel like a bum. And I'm ashamed of myself. And I usually hurt somebody close to me because we let things out on people closest to us because they're the safest inside of us. We think they're the ones who won't walk away. So we act like a real saint a lot of times outside of our homes or uh, our families or uh, when you first meet as a class. And then when we feel safer with people, we start to let out uh, the way we are and how we deal with certain things. OK, so what it created in me is it created tremendous anxiety, fear of the future. That's how I refer to anxiety. It's fear of the future. It doesn't matter if it's five minutes from now or an hour from now, or tomorrow when I have an exam, or the next day or a month from now. It's fear of the future. Okay. I, I lived in resentment. <clears throat> I, I'm sure some of you, uh, maybe none of you, maybe it's just me, would stand in front of the mirror in the morning and be having a conversation with somebody that I should have said this and I should have said that. And uh, if I could do it again, this is what I'd do. And I'd be very upset at them. Okay? And resentment is when we hang on to stuff, anger, in order to hurt somebody else. It's like taking some arsenic and then saying, I'm going to get you back by showing you that it's going to kill me. That's resentment. And what happens is, with anxiety and resentment, we, we, we live in the past. Resentment's always about the past. Or we have fear of the future. But we're everywhere but here. We're everywhere but where we are. Because we don't know how to deal with life head on. The stress usually is about the future. Okay? The depression is usually about the past. If we can't be right where we are, then you'll always be tight. And you'll always be in fear at some, some level because you can't read the future. You think you can, but you can't, right? I mean, fact of the matter is that any one of us could drop dead right now, this very moment. We have no control over anything, nothing. 
The only thing, well, the only thing we have control over is volition, our volition. We have control over our attitude. That's it. Bada boom, that's it. But we live in an illusion that we have control over all kinds of things because things generally go our way. But when the illusion doesn't work out and I make a plan and I don't have the outcome that the plan is supposed to reflect, life has thrown me a curveball. And either I'm terrible or they're terrible or something happened. And we begin to go into a major judgment. Why? Because we're in fear. We're in fear of losing something that we've got or not getting something that we want. So my anger was really like a shield to hide myself from people seeing that I believed I was a failure. Okay. It's kind of like if a, a rock comes off the back of a, of a truck and you're driving and it's right at you. you know, what do you do? What's the first thing you do? A little rock's coming at you. You flinch, you, you duck, you do something, right? Usually the arms go up. It's kind of an instinctive thing. The arms go up. Why? I ask guys, they're like, come on, Evan, what are you asking me? Why? Because the arms, better to get hit in the arms than in the face, right? Why? Because the face is more vulnerable than the arms. Makes sense. So we go to protect ourselves this way in order to protect the face and the chest. So this can be a metaphor. This is the shield. This is a metaphor for this is anger. It protects me, or it can be even stress, or it can be anxiety. It protects me from, from having to deal with, with the fear and the stuff underneath that is so vulnerable. The feeling that, oh no, I'm going to disappoint my parents. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, do the... the I'm, I'm going to fail at my grades. I'm not going to do what I know I can do or what I think I should do. And so that creates a lot of stress because we're not accepting the fact that we really, you know, make mistakes. We're human beings that, believe it or not, the world is not going to cave in if you um, get a bad grade or even that you don't make it through law school. Life will go on. Not something that we want, but life will go on. And we don't know what's good for us and what's not good for us. How many times have we heard the saying, some of the, some of the best... Uh, some of the worst things that have happened have turned out to be the best things in my life, right? So our judgments are, are often very skewed. And what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about how that, uh, how that happens and what we call it. You want to go for a few minutes? Yeah. If, if you're at a good breaking point. You want me to stop? I'm always at a good breaking point, man. I'll pick up where we are. So don't stress. Go get some lunch. Don't get upset if you drop a little bread on the floor. Nobody's looking. This is where speakers, this is the most challenging aspect of being a speaker. It's one thing to have to do the after lunch crowd when everybody's falling asleep. It's another one to do when people are eating <clears throat> because there's nothing, you know, I might be a good speaker and a nice guy, but hey, Everybody get out of my way when it comes to food, right? <laughs> so that's fine. Don't worry about it. You just do your thing. Um, I, would, I told him I would have come just for the sour cream and onion laid potato chips. <laughs> if I knew those were there, yeah. All right. Um, what I'm going to do at this point is i kind of given you a backdrop so that you understand that I understand. You know, it's one thing. Excuse me. <laughs> it's one thing to talk about things. It's another thing to live through them. And all of you have lived my story. It's just relative. Maybe not the cancer part, but you know, we all we all have challenges. But it's not about what happens. It's about how we deal with it. Life happens. It's not always what we would call fair. Do you know the human race, relative to what we know of the, of the size and of the history or length of time the, the universe has been around, is less than a blink of an eye. 
the entire human race, not just me or you. So when we think about that, sometimes it's easier not to take ourselves so seriously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide for you some of the things that we say to ourselves and that we see other people in other people doing also that are what we call cognitive distortions. Cognitive distortion, cognition is the process of thinking. A distortion is a skewed view. I think you know what a distortion is. Okay? And these are very, very common uh, that we all use in our lives. And you'll notice that you, each individual use a, more, a little more of one than the other. And what I've tried to do is put together the most common ones. Um, rather, there's, you know, there's like 20 of them. But I'm just giving you the most common ones because these are some things you've probably experienced. And I put together a little example with each. Okay. So <clears throat> cognition is when our thought process is not fully rational. Okay. We're not completely irrational, but it's just a little off. For example, I tell myself I have to be perfect. Right? So you get a B when you thought you were going to get an A. Ouch. So what we do is deny the reality. Somebody might think, deny the reality that I'm not perfect because I can't handle that. So instead, well, the test wasn't what the professor said it was supposed to be. Right? And if my mother hadn't called last night, then I would have had the time to study, and my boyfriend upset me, and, you know, it was their fault. And that's the only reason it happened. I would have got the A, but I couldn't, right, because of the way it happened. I was sitting in the wrong chair, right? The air wasn't on. There was dust, okay? Whatever it is, if our psyche is not ready to handle that we're not perfect or we're not up to par of what our expectations are, then we've got to put the blame on somebody or something else. But it's true, the truth is, reality is nobody's perfect. We hear that, but it's a lot harder to live it. Nobody's perfect. And to try and reach perfection guarantees failure. No, let me take that back. To expect that I should be perfect guarantees failure. There's nothing wrong with, with uh, trying to achieve it knowing that I can't. I'm going to get as close as I can. But you will always fail. The people who always fail are those who try to be perfect. And when we strive for perfection, I want you to know we have to step on someone else to get there. Because we have to compare if we're going to be the top. So it's a double whammy. Okay. So that's, that's an example. Um, so here are some cognitive distortions that we all use that are very common. It's one that's called the all or nothing distortion. Okay? So you see things in black and white. Men are famous for that. I've seen a lot of women just this very second. Uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, you know, all right? See things, it's, it, all right, when we're in an argument with someone, particularly a significant other, right? Well, you always do that. Well, I never have this happen. And it's not true. But we're in that space because we're not able at that moment to, to chill. Right? And if I were to say, well, you do that sometimes, it's very hard to justify being angry. Right? You know, you've done that three times in the past month and a half. Most of the time, we have to justify how we feel by an all or nothing. It's also a great way to maintain anxiety. Okay. I have to do it all. Or why even try? Okay. Fear of the future. Why should I even start if I know that I can't, get, I can't do it all anyhow? Okay. So this, this is one that we, we deal with quite a bit. Right? It's that risk of, of trying because I either have to get it all right or I'm a failure. If I'm not perfect, I'm a failure. And that's another cognitive distortion. Okay. A big one on a personal level is the need for acceptance. Now this is one I went through a lot in my life. It wasn't, uh, <clears throat> my, my deal was I needed everybody to accept me or like me. Because when the, 
people didn't really care one way or the other. I saw it as not liking me, which triggered that I'm not validated that my dad was right. Okay. And that's a distortion. That's not what they're saying. And someone came along and said, Evan, it's going to have to be good enough that people don't hate you. Okay? Because some of the people are going to love you, some of them can kind of take you or leave you, and some of them could rather, you know, it's like, he's a pain, but he's okay. But if they hate you, then you should deal with it. Okay? So, the idea that I have to be liked, or that people have to approve, whether it be family, close people, or, or a group in particular, is a distorted process in our minds. Because when is it ever going to happen that everybody's going to like us? And if somebody doesn't like us, how does that translate into I'm not good? When my father got upset and raged out and was, you know, here's this, you know, pretty powerful, very good uh, uh, trial lawyer in four point restraints and dies because he won't let go of, of you know, me getting in the last word. You know, I didn't cause his death, but it took me five years to figure that out. Because I was either the hero or the goat. It was all or nothing. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, we got in a big argument, but what, it was his choice to stay angry. It was his choice. But, you know, there was some kind of benefit that I got out of staying guilty. I was able to beat myself up. I was able to fear the future. I was able to be anywhere but where I am. I, I was able to justify being angry because I didn't know how to be happy. And I wasn't ready to say that. I wasn't ready to own it. So, all or nothing, overgeneralization, seeing a single negative event as a never-ending pattern of defeat. For example, I blew that exam. Now I'm sure I'll never make it through law school. Anybody ever? No, nah, you haven't said anything like that, right? I see the people in the back. I never did anything like that. What are you talking about? Where's the food? I want some more. OK. <laughs> All right. This is pretty typical, you know? Um, uh, my car broke down, right? I'm like, I never should have got this car. Now, mind you, my car has like 135,000 miles on it and never breaks down. But when it breaks down, I hate Kias, right? <laughs> I never should have got this car. I knew it. My mother was right 11 years ago. Okay? So, overgeneralization. We overgeneralize about something in order to make it a big deal, in order to justify uh, us having lots of anxiety and being upset, rather than dealing with it, rather than looking at our fear and going, I'm just getting out of hand. Okay? And disqualifying the positive. Okay? We disqualify the positive. My daughter does this. She's an honor roll APA student in high school, you know? And she had like six A's. They have like seven classes. She got six A's and a, and a B. What did she focus on? The B. It was like, the, it was like a disqualifying the, po disqualifying the positive, overgeneralization, and all or nothing all in the same, you know? See, I can never get it all right. And I'll never be able to go to college with getting B's, and it's going to turn into a C. And I always do this, and he never does it. Right? But she didn't, she didn't know how to deal with not trying to be perfect. She's too hard on herself. But she's not fully ready to deal with that, so she pushes it off. Right? Now, I'm going to go through a couple more, and then I'm going to talk about a little bit about how, how you deal with other people who you see having these issues, okay? Because you're certainly going to have in law school, you're very tight, you know each other, you know, you see some people do it more than others, okay? And, and you, you'll see people destroy uh, uh, their graduate school experience. You'll see people uh, uh, sabotage uh, passing the bar, okay? Or uh, first year students, you know, the, the final exams. You'll literally see it in yourself and in other people and how we have to address that. So here's a couple more. Uh, jumping to conclusions. Now, I know this is very foreign to many of you. 
right? We all jump to conclusions. There's two ways to look at it. One we have is called mind reading, okay? That's where I'm looking at that person over there and I'm going, you know what? They don't like anything I'm having to say. I can tell. They're looking around and they're going to go tell everybody else that I was a really bad speaker and then people are going to know and then there's got to be somebody in that group they're going to tell faculty. Faculty's going to tell somebody else. And you know, I'm just never going to be able to speak again. I can't do my practice because I got cancer. I'm going to wind up in a, we're living with my mother in the back room somewhere and my daughter's going to be sent off to defects, you know, and life is over. Okay? That's how quick we can jump to conclusions and lead it on. Okay? We, we do this. We make a huge deal out of things that aren't happening. Why? Where am I? I'm not in the present, right? I'm in, I'm determining the future. And that's a cognitive distortion. It makes absolutely no sense. We do not know what's going to happen in the future. Expectations will kick, it'll kick your behind every time. Expectations, you'll get disappointed with them almost every time. And if you don't, it'll be the next one. You're setting yourself up to fail. Be where you are. This is all you have in life is where you are right now. This is it. This second. This second. This second. Everything else is who knows what's going to happen. The second one is fortune telling and that's kind of what I did. I, I put those two together. First I went, you know, I'm reading somebody's mind and then I know what's going to happen. That's a big one in school.